Hello everyone, good evening and warm welcome today to this event, uh, the seminar which is called Take the Leap, which is focused on employment for skilled immigrant spouses. This seminar, this event today is uh, organized and hosted by Friends of India, which is an umbrella association uh, comprising of 16 different uh, regional and cu cultural associations of India based out of Finland. Uh, Friends of India was a brainchild of the ambassador, Mr. Ravish Kumar, and he is himself the patron for this uh, umbrella association. And today, this is the first event under the banner of Friends of India. I'm Vashali Doshi, and I've been living in Finland for last 13 years with my family in Espo. I work as a sales director at HCL Technologies, and today I'm here in the capacity as a coordinator of Friends of India. So warm welcome, everyone. Um, I would also like to thank the Embassy of India and the Ambassador Mr. Ravish Kumar for giving us this platform and helping us address this ever so important topic, which is uh, employment of the skilled uh, immigrant spouses. Uh, you know, uh, why we decided to do this event is because, uh, uh, you know, the demand for talent in Finland, skilled talent has been growing and we have seen a huge influx of uh, talented people from India coming for uh, various kinds of roles in technology, engineering, ICT services or in higher education. and. Quite typically with them comes their family and their trailing spouses who are also well um, educated and experienced. And uh, we thought that this is an attempt we would do together with the embassy, uh, with the support of city of Helsinki, Helsinki and city of Espo to address this burning issue. So uh, we will have uh, the city presenting various uh, facilities and programs run by them for skilled talent coming to Finland. And then we will have a panel discussion with a distinguished set of guests, which I'll introduce later. So let's get started today. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, first invite uh, the ambassador, Mr. Ravish Kumar, to give some uh, welcome opening notes. And then we will start with the event. So thank you, everyone, and welcome. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vaishali, for uh, wonderfully setting the context for today's event. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is uh, nice to see uh, a good turnout, which basically uh, proves that this is a very important issue for the Indian immigrant spouses. Uh, and I'm pleased, frankly, that this happens to be the topic, uh, the first topic under the banner of Friends of India. This is a topic which is very close to my heart. Um, where Shali did mention about the support being extended by the city of Helsinki and city of uh, Espo. There are presentations lined up uh, by them, and I'm sure the details which uh, we are going to hear today by the two cities will be relevant uh, for people, for Indian uh, spouses who are based in other cities as well. Now, uh, you know, the idea for this seminar, uh, this came when um, we opened a few positions at the embassy, and uh, we received hundreds of applications uh, from different parts of Finland and many of them, they actually were from uh, the Indian spouses and most of them, they were overqualified for the job. We interviewed some of them uh, with my colleagues at the embassy and there are a few things which came out very clearly. Uh, we realized, number one, that uh, the spouses were qualified, in some cases, as, as I mentioned, overqualified. Number two, they had the skill Number three, they were very eager to join uh, the workforce. Number four, while some of them had made attempts to uh, get conversant with the Finnish language, not all had the necessary qualification. Number five, the level of integration of this uh, community, you know, I mean, who have been here for a few years now, I think was quite high. And uh, many of them, they have been trying to get uh, employed in the last few years but they have been unsuccessful. At the same time, all of them agreed that the programs which are being run by the cities, uh, you know, like Helsinki, Espo, Vanta, they have been quite helpful. So we decided to address the most important question, why are skilled Indian spouses not finding work in Finland? 
Let us look at the statistics. You know, if I just look at the Indian passport holders, there are around 8,000 uh, highly qualified people, uh, uh, Indians in Finland. They are well placed. And uh, among many factors which attract an Indian professionals to work in Finland, the employment opportunities for a spouse ranks quite high. The other being, of course, you know, the, the, the possibility of getting the children admitted in English medium schools. But uh, I think we also need to see this in the context of uh, the Indian women joining the workforce, even in India in large numbers and reaching top positions. I think we need to understand now that the Indian, modern Indian woman is ambitious, driven, qualified. And uh, in Finland, the Indian community and the Indian spouses, they don't want to live uh, off benefits. Now let us look on the other side to take stock of the demand and supply situation. Uh, Finland uh, does need qualified workforce to keep its economy growing. Its estimates indicate the requirement of thousands of qualified professionals every year. The local market, labor market is in short supply. The same is the situation within EU. So naturally the option remains, you know, that if you have to hire from outside the EU, but you already have people who are in your country, who are qualified, who are entitled to work. There is no need to hire workers, you know, if we can use some of the talent which is already in this country. You already have a group of people who are fully conversant with the culture of Finland, uh, with your language. They have decided to make Finland their temporary home. Their children are going to finish schools and the level of integration of an Indian family is, is quite high in the local community. Uh, and uh, I think we also need to keep in mind that the job opportunities, you know, uh, for uh, Indian spouses, uh, they also will encourage better integration in the local society. So there is, frankly, the missing part of the puzzle. Uh, we need to identify the bottleneck. Is Finnish language absolutely necessary? Is there a skill mismatch? Uh, and how do we believe the service survey which indicates that, uh, you know, that despite having the same qualification, uh, some people are able to find a, a better job than the others? And how long will it take before we see the industry finally opening up and shedding the hesitancy of accepting, you know, uh, immigrant uh, spouses in their workforce? So we come to the question for which we have uh, come together here. We all know the problem. The spouses also understand the challenges. Many of them, they also know the reasons why they are perhaps finding it difficult to get a job. Today, we should focus on how we can work together so that we can get them into the job mar market. And more importantly, uh, I hope that through the presentations, we can uh, share with the spouses how they can prepare themselves for the job market. Uh, despite a lot of knowledge uh, available, I still feel that there are areas where perhaps some improvement can be done in some way. We, have, uh, we do have excellent speakers today uh, with real life experiences. I hope the seminar today will be able to address uh, some of these uh, challenges and provide some answers to the questions which uh, we, uh, I just mentioned. Thank you once again for joining in today uh, and thank you uh, Mini Vashali for coordinating this event together. I wish you all a very productive session and uh, thank you very much. Good evening everyone. My name is Mini and I'm the cultural coordinator at the Embassy of India. It's uh, lovely to have you all here. I welcome you all and we'll quickly start with the presentations now. Uh, before that, I'll introduce our uh, speakers for the evening. First, I would like to welcome and introduce uh, Olga Silfer. And Olga Silfer is a project management of competence center for highly educated immigrants in ESPO. Olga has 13 years of experience in municipal integration policy, inclusion, community dialogue, adult education, and immigrant employment. Olga has created such service concepts as Immigrant NGO Forum, NGO Development Subsidy, Orientation groups for stay-at-home parents, Finnish integration, fair, etc. 
She is a Master of Social Science with specialization in integration of immigrants in Finland. Olga is a chair of board of Multicultural Women Association, Monica. It's a pleasure to have you, Olga, with us today. And uh, I hand over the screen to you. Thank you very much for introduction. And dear all, dear ambassador, friends of India, organizers, guests, I warmly thank you for the opportunity to take a moment of your time and present to you the uh, public employment services as they are currently and refer a bit also to the private ones. I will start with presenting uh, employment trials in Finland and move on to uh, present services for highly educated immigrants in capital area mostly. I will be followed by my colleagues Ms. Grace Ondo and Mr. Uh, Johan um, Fogel, uh, who will tell more about uh, services for spouses available in capital region. I hope there will be also place to ask questions or we could answer them in chat. So, let me start with my presentation. So, what is it? Uh, what is employment trials, and how does it help you? Employment trial is the national-wide innovation by Finnish government. Uh, from March 2021 this year, um, services for certain group of population, employment services, were moved from national level to municipal level and on this map of Finland you can see the orange color uh, areas those are the ones where employment trials are in force so all the capital region for example is there that's the small orange area in the very south side uh, employment trials will go on till the end of December 2023 and already now national government is indeed making a proposal of moving responsibility for employment totally to municipalities. So how the, is this knowledge beneficial to you? First of all, uh, all the employment services for non-native speakers were transferred to municipalities, which means that if you were registered as unemployed uh, job seeker, your services are now given by municipality where you live. Uh, official uh, reasons for starting municipal trials were a need of unemployed job seekers to have multi-professional team uh, services and comprehensive individual support. Uh, employment trials also gave municipalities opportunities to innovate new services for the groups that they see fit. Municipalities are also extremely uh, motivated to get employment rates up since municipalities are paying a um, fee for long-term unemployed citizens to the government. Uh, however, lots of things have stayed the same. One of such things, uh, basically all the laws, all basic principles, all, all basic databases are still the same, even though employment trials were in force from March. How does everything work? In general, majority of operations and communications are conducted online through www.depalvedut.fi oma asiointi, my own interface. In general, services are divided into three paths depending on the situation of clients. Uh, names could vary from municipality to municipality, but logic still says, stays the same. There are services for those who are ready to the labor market. There is no need to learn anything new. They are perfectly ready. Then there are services for those who need to learn something in order to be fit for the Finnish labor market. 
And then there are services for those who have so many challenges in so many areas of life that they need multi-professional team to support them in their return to labor market. How does the service operate in very general? The person registers as an unemployed job seeker. The person fills in his or her personal data and is given a call or has a discussion online with his or her job coach about options. Job coach together with the client com comes up with the plan. Client basically uh, follows the plan, attends services and looks for work. And it either yields results or doesn't. Then plan is corrected and it is repeated. That's the basic function, how, how this system works. Now, let me move forward. What is there available to job seeker on the national level? I have divided the services into the same three groups I introduced earlier. So for those who are ready for the labor market, then they don't need to learn anything else. Uh, there are databases, workshops and trainings on job hunt aspects, workshops on Finnish labor market, recruitment events, job proposals, and financial instruments to lower threshold of employers such as job trial, wage subsidy, starting subsidy for entrepreneur, and some municipality-specific extra funding, something called Helsinki Lisa or Espo Lisa, so respectively Helsinki Extra and Espo Extra. Then for those who want to study something or need to study something before they are employable, there is another batch of services available. There are so-called SIMHE services. That's basically an information service that helps a um, person assess how uh, uh, do his or her qualifications from home country, how are they compared to Finnish demands? Do they need to be uh, uh, recognized? Should there be more studies there? Where could studies happen and how? SIMHA service answers to those questions and actually you don't need employment services in order to get to that service. Labor market trainings can be accessed only via unemployment services. They are full-time trainings. Also, some trainings are for academical participants, though they are not only to blue-collar jobs, even though majority of them are. There are opportunities to study a degree or modules from degrees if they help you to get employed. Before starting a degree, please negotiate with your job coach. Same goes for courses or certificates that are necessary in your area of expertise. Finnish and Swedish training could be also added to the list of, of your uh, activities in your employment plan. Some people feel that they actually have to restart career, change area of work and they are not sure where to go. There are psychologists who could help in thinking of what career path should a client follow. There are also extended services for starting entrepreneurs, complete with information services in Helsinki and ESPO. Uh, this information service is done in several languages. If there are some health issues or social issues, health assessment and multi-professional teams assessment are available as well. Some participants uh, would benefit from rehabilitation workshops, basically controlled environments where person is doing some sort of work and uh, is receiving support of multi-professional team at the same time. So those are the services that are generally available to whole population living in Finland 
and being unemployed job seeker. So, and is there anything special available for the uh, highly educated immigrants located in capital region? Yes, there is. Um, basically, SIMHE consultations are available all over capital region. They are mostly done online. Um, in ESPO, my competence center, competence center for highly educated immigrants, take care of uh, the needs of highly educated immigrants and uh, helping them getting employed. In Helsinki, there is no dedicated team that will take care only of highly educated immigrants. However, there is a team taking care of highly educated clients in general. In Vanta, there will be two experts separately dedicated to highly educated immigrants very soon. The hiring process is finishing about now. In all the capital area, some sort of spouse program or services for spouses is available. And very soon, Johan and Grace will tell you more about those. As I represent the Competence Center of Highly Educated Immigrants, I will show you what is available if you are a client of our service, what extra is available. So I took the previous slide and I did edit some green points that are the extras. Basically, our clients receive customized lists of open positions that correspond to their skills and needs. They also get prepared. Uh, are helped be, uh, in preparation for interview in groups or individually. Uh, we do hidden job matching. We organize workshops on CVs, motivation letters, employer calls, jobs, interviews, and so on and so forth. We send newsletter monthly to our clients. We organize several group activities that help people in their job hunt. We also have a special uh, Finnish course that is available only to our clients. For some clients, a prolonged search for work is daunting and self-esteem could fall. For such clients, we have Powering Up for Success groups that help people find again the joy of looking for work and finding the strengths and motivations. In order to sign for uh, to our center, your job coach needs to transfer you. Our services are available only for those who are officially residing in ESPO. You could ask to be transferred through OMA Asiointi service. My slides will be available to all of you. I will send them to organizers and organizers could send them to you. So no need to write those down. I am not sure if I have any extra time. Please, organizers, tell me more. Uh, I have included a list of external services, which is a card deck, really, telling you of all different all opportunities different that are there. Enable. So, um, if there is time, I could introduce those shortly, or I could leave them here in this. Um, Dia deck, and you could get to know them by yourselves. Organizers, well, how should we go about this? Uh, we have uh, two minutes, minutes, Olga. Two minutes is a bit too short since there is probably like 15 in, uh, private services here. So I'll leave it in these information packages for now. Uh, how are we taking questions? I have asked people to write in, in the messages. So if we get something, we will uh, definitely uh, address it here. Ad here. Excellent. So that's as far as my presentation will go for now, and you will receive my presentation uh, later on via email. Thank you very Thank much you very for much your for attention. attention. Thank, you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you so much. And next, I would like to introduce Johan Faugel and Grace Ondo. And uh, Johan is the project planner of the Spouse Program and part of the passionate team which is building and offering this service for the last one and a half years. 
Johan moved to Finland 15 years ago and is very familiar with the social and the professional challenges international people are facing in a new country. Next to the spouse program, Johan is also a coach and a mentor, supporting people in developing their soft skills to be more successful in their social life and career. And for Grace, uh, Grace uh, Ondo develops and oversees ESPO services for spouses. Uh, she is uh, into Finnish integration and employment policies and has been working in the NGO world before joining the public sector. Grace is also a professional trainer and creates different workshops to support foreigners moving their employability in Finland. She has also a heart to support employers and local communities connecting with foreign talents. I welcome you both. Over to you. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for having me, uh, inviting me and um, giving me and Grace this opportunity to talk about uh, the program and the services we have available for, for the spouses. We appreciate it very much to be here with you and, and thank you very much for your attention. Um, now, as I was already introduced, my name is Jochen Faugel and I'm the project planner of the spouse program that is run by the city of Helsinki. Uh, as you can see on the slide here, uh, we are doing this uh, together. So I, I will talk a bit more about the collaboration and, and also as uh, Grace will go a bit more into that. But briefly to note this already at the beginning that despite the fact that it's Helsinki and Espo and Vanta, uh, I think when we are talking about the spouses, the needs of the spouses are all the same. And obviously, even if we have uh, different services here and there, what we try to do is to support you as best as we can together and, and as a community. Jochen, I just want to check that the audience can actually see the slide, uh, because I think there is the slide of Take the Leap that's still here, so I'm not sure if the okay. audience... Actually, actually, we can see I the can... slide and it is in presentation mode. Yeah, so, so it's all great. Um, so. Quickly referring to the slide, what you can see here is basically on the one side, uh, the spouse program that is organized by the city of Helsinki and, and run by myself and my colleagues. Uh, and then you also have information about uh, the services that ESPO is providing for the spouses, uh, which you can equally find here. But Grace, if you can stop sharing now and then uh, I can share my presentation and I can tell you a bit more about the spouse program. Uh, so let's see how the, the technique is on our side. Okay, usually I'm in Zoom sharing, so now I have to find it first. Uh -huh. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I now you should see, you should be able to see my screen. Uh, if not, please start screaming, let me know. But yeah, so uh, I'll take the next, I think I have like what, 12, 11 minutes left uh, to tell you a bit more about the spouse program. So first of all, it's, it's important to understand that this is part of the National Talent Boost Initiative. Uh, so it's not only the cities of Helsinki and Espo and Vanta trying to support spouses, but it's certainly something that the whole nation like Finland is understanding the importance of this topic. Um, we started with the program uh, in June 2020, so we are not that old actually. Uh, we've been running it for about one and a half years and basically we have two goals. On the one side, it's very important to us to, to support the spouses, to support you guys. Um, when it's coming in, you know, to the topic of settling here, because very often uh, the spouses do have actually the weakest spot when you are moving with your family to, to a new country because you don't have a job, you don't have a kindergarten or a, or a school spot where integration would be a bit more easy. So you're more or less left by yourself and that's why, why we try to help you. Um, on the other side, another very important topic for us and why we have the program is because we try to support uh, local companies in retaining their international employees. Because very often 
I mean, it's it's an equation, right? All of us who are in a relationship know that if one partner is not happy, then then the whole partnership or the whole family is not very happy, and that often leads them to international employers moving back to their home countries. And that's obviously something we we try to avoid. Um, as you can see here, a few numbers since we are running the project or the program we had so far around 570 people who, who signed up to the program um, and we have 40 active company partners and, and public players and NGOs. And here you can see an overview of, of the partners we have. Uh, quite a few gaming and IT companies. The reason for that is simply because that's when we started approaching the companies, we focused on those, but then we also have um, ones in other areas like Relex Solutions, um, Barona, Miradore Review, G Healthcare, Kone, and so on. Um, and as you see, obviously, also here, some uh, public players and NGOs, because we, we believe that we have many common goals, so why not try to reach them together? What do we offer? Why why should you join the spouse program if if you would indeed be interested in what we have? On the one side, we offer a community. That's something that is very important to us. Uh, we we like to provide a platform for our participants who are very often in the same situation, have a similar mindset, similar challenges, and because we have people who have been moving to Finland couple of weeks ago, but we also have participants who have been living in Finland for many years. Uh, it actually works quite well and the community can help each other very well. Um, at the moment, we are using Slack as our community platform. Not sure if you're familiar with that, uh, but that's a great way how you can also online stay in touch with, with all the people we have on board. Another very important part is, is workshops and meetups we organize. Um, so we mainly we focus on social, cultural and, and career related topics because we believe that those are kind of the cornerstones we should familiarize with if we want to build and find a home in a new country. Um, and we do that or we offer these topics over workshops, uh, meetups, networking events and we have around three, three to four events every month we are offering our participants. Um, it's flexible, obviously you don't have to participate, but if the right topics are there, if you're interested, if you have the time to participate, we, we welcome everybody with, with open arms. Um, then for, for those who are very much interested and, and focused on, your, on, um, on developing your career and, and your professional path, we do have a dedicated career track. Uh, now, for that, you, you have to apply. And then if you are chosen, there are certain criteria you have to fulfill. But if you are chosen, um, we would offer you then individual coaching uh, and peer mentoring. SIMA services was one part of it. Olga already mentioned it. But now, since it is actually available, um, it won't be part, uh, part of our program anymore because you can find it over the other ways. Um, and then I thought I want to tell you a bit more about, about our future plans. Now, uh, we have been running this program for about one and a half years, um, but there are so many things we realized we, we can still improve and make our program even more efficient for our participants and more successful. So we are now running a series of design workshops uh, with our spouses, company partners, and, and other stakeholders trying to understand how we can improve. Um, and there are certainly things we, we want to do. We, make, we want to make the program a bit more streamlined. We want to give it a bit more structure in the future. Um, the career track itself will have a few changes, so we will include some uh, dedicated mentoring. We will focus more on matchmaking. Um, the general spouse program we also want to offer very soon a LinkedIn group for the, the spouse program participants and our company partners, because we have heard so often that this networking between companies 
or organizations and, and spouses is so important. So that's what we wanted to provide them with the LinkedIn group, which will be added within a couple of weeks. Um, we also want to give our participants more opportunities to, to express themselves uh, and, and to present themselves and their culture. Uh, among other things, what we are planning to introduce rather soon is a spouse program kitchen uh, because we are figuring that whether we like to cook or we all like to eat, but in one way or another, food is something that, that unites us. And it's such a nice way to talk about our culture, our own passion. Uh, and that's certainly something we, we also want to include even more so now in our program. And then just again, always kind of thinking how we can improve and, and uh, how we can build the future. Very important, we also always try to build the future together with our participants, because obviously you guys have the needs and, and, and the wishes and we try to, to cater them as good as possible. Um, here is some feedback. It's, um, well, the latest one, I think the numbers are about half a year old. It's time for a new feedback. But as you can see, I think overall uh, the resonance and, and um, the feedback for the program has been rather good. And obviously that is something that makes me and my team very happy to hear. Um, some reasons why we have been successful is, uh, first of all, we do believe that we have a good communication with the people in our program. And that's something that's very important for us. Uh, another thing is our diverse collaboration. So we do collaborate uh, very intensively with our company partners. We actually try to intensify that even more in the future, kind of also expecting more from the company partners. Um, and another very important thing, um, we already uh, got to know Grace briefly and, and we will hear more from her. And that's a very important collaboration we have with uh, with the city of Espo, but also with, with Vanta. Uh, and that's something that's very important for us. As I mentioned at the beginning, just because you live in different cities doesn't mean that you have different needs for different challenges. So let's, let's keep that together. Um, we constantly try to develop our program, whether that's by, by our own understanding or then, as I mentioned before, we constantly are in touch with our spouses, trying to understand what they need, how we can improve. Um, and that's how we move forward. We are very transparent. Uh, when it's coming to communication, explaining people reasons for why things can happen or not. And so far, we have always received good feedback about that. And our program is easy to join. Uh, so if, for example, you have tried to join the TE office services, for example, there are certain bureaucratic hurdles you might have to take first. Um, our program, if you do believe that it can help you and that it can provide value, uh, you are more than welcome to join. It's basically a, a click away, and I will show you in a second how to do that. Um, and we have a holistic approach. Yes, employment is very important, but we truly believe that when we are talking about integration, uh, we can't only talk about employment. There are other aspects like social and cultural related aspects, which we also try to implement. Um, what's very important to understand uh, is that we are not an employment program. So we don't function like the, the TE office in that service, and we don't have just one goal of giving you a job. Um, and unfortunately, some people may even misunderstand that and presume that they join the program and then they will end up with a job. That's not the case. Uh, we are an integration program where we help spouses uh, to make their integration journey easier, more fun, more successful. Employment is one part of it, and we provide you with the tools uh, and the related knowledge. But as I mentioned before, there are many other aspects we are focusing on that are in the social and the cultural area. So please keep that in mind. Um, if indeed you would want to join, um, it's actually very easy to do so. Oh, sorry. Uh, you just go to spouseprogram.fi uh, and then you, you s click the sign up button. There are a few questions and fields you have to fill in. You send it, I'll get an email 
I'll reach out to you and, uh, and you are part of the program. Otherwise, we don't expect anything. The only question is, do you think that uh, what we provide is valuable for you? And on this very web page, you also find a bit more information than on what we are offering. Now, I had a quick call with Vaishala uh, this morning, and she asked me to talk briefly ab about a few more things that are then more related to actually then finding finding a job. Um, and just briefly, I wanted to mention a few points which I, I think is very important what we should consider generally. And now talking as somebody who has worked with spouses, but also as a coach, trying to help people to improve. The, I think these are four important points we should all keep in mind. Um, whether you want to join a program like a spouse program, or if you want to go back to, to your career, if you want to find a job, if you just want to integrate socially, I think one of the most important points is to have clarity. Right? And that, that's where I see many people going wrong. Right? Do you really have clarity? If you want to find a job, do you know what job you want um, and what exactly that is? Right? I think the biggest mistake would be to say, I'm, I'm open for everything. Um, um, might sound very good, but it is actually rather counterproductive because how could I help you to find a job or, or give you some tips where to search if all I know is that you are open to everything. So clarity, be specific in what you want uh, and what your goals are. I think the second very important point is skill set. We all are highly skilled and gifted people and we have a lot of skills we bring with us. Um, but these skills we may have accumulated over many years. And if we briefly think about our skills for five minutes, we may not really come up with, with all the ones we have. So I think it's very important to, to reflect. And that might take sometimes days or even weeks and, and make a list of all the skills you actually have. Um, and especially, of course, those that are then supportive in finding the job you, you are looking for. Uh, next point is a network. Um, I think, or I'm pretty sure that all of us, we, we do have an extensive network, but again, sometimes we have to remind ourselves about this network and, and who we have who can actually support us. And going back to the first point, the more clarity we have on what we want to reach, the easier it is to think then of the right people that can help us. And the last part before I will say then my goodbye and thank you is, is the language uh, and I think the ambassador already mentioned this point at the beginning. There is no right or wrong, I think, but you have to understand yourself. Is learning Finnish a priority for you or not? I, I think in many cases you can make the point that it's important to speak Finnish, but you also can look at it from the other side of saying that, hey, how long would it actually take you to learn Finnish so well that you could compete with a native speaking Finnish person for the same job. Again, nothing right or wrong, but that is certainly something you should then consider for yourself. But these are just a few tips in addition, which uh, I hope can be helpful and, and give some point and time to reflect. But otherwise, um, I hope you find our spouse program interesting. I would be more than happy if if I can welcome you on board. And if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to reach out at any time. Um, the information you can find here. And I'm also more than happy to share in my, my presentation afterwards then. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you. OK. Uh, is Grace, are you saying something? Uh, well, yeah, I was supposed to have 10 minutes to present what we do in the city of Espo. Okay, but uh, I guess we need to do it a little bit quicker, Grace, maybe five minutes. Uh, yes, sure, sure. Yes, yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Grace Ondo, and I'm the coordinator for the services for spouses in the city of Espoo. Uh, and I know that uh, many of you actually live in Espoo.
people and might be uh, interested in what we do specifically in our city. Uh, so the services for spouses in ESPO is developed by Tuolicious ESPO, meaning that uh, we are uh, heavily relying and using all the resources available from the employment services uh, of the city of ESPO. Uh, our mission is quite uh, simple. Uh, we want to increase the spouses and employers knowledge, uh, skills and network, uh, connect spouses with employers and local communities, and also, uh, of course, uh, make sure that uh, all of you living in ESPO are aware of all the services and opportunities available to you in your city. Uh, we cooperate with uh, different uh, parties. Uh, our main partners are, of course, uh, within the city of ESPO, the Employment Services and the Competence Center for Highly Educated Immigrants that Olga introduced to you, as well as Talent ESPO. We also cooperate with uh, other programs uh, uh, in uh, Helsinki, the Spouse Program, and then Talent Vanta, uh, different companies, uh, NGOs and universities. So the way we work uh, in the uh, services for spouses uh, in ESPO is that uh, we first uh, make sure that we can inform and orient spouses uh, and uh, employers towards relevant services uh, within ESPO or uh, our uh, external partners. So uh, we really have a role of uh, informing and orienting you uh, uh, to, to services that make sense for you as spouse uh, in ESPO. Uh, we also uh, create and develop different events, uh, groups and trainings uh, that will increase your skills, knowledge, uh, and network. So we have sort of a sort of a double hat uh, in the services for spouses in ESPO. Um, our uh, vision in uh, the city of ESPO is that a spouse is also a job seeker, is also a parent, a talent, a uh, volunteer, someone uh, engaged and committed in their community and, for example, in local politics. Uh, so we do not consider spouses as an isolated group and we try to build services that can include the spouses and take your needs into account without necessarily uh, making you interact only with, uh, with spouses. So we do not offer uh, a package only for spouses, uh, but uh, once you uh, reach out to us, we make sure uh, that we find a, a combination of services uh, that, that fit you in your own personal case uh, as a spouse, but also a job seeker, parent, a talent, uh, etc. Uh, we focus, of course, on professional lives, but also social uh, and personal. We organize different uh, meetups or events related also to personal and social lives uh, development in Finland and in ESPO. Uh, we make sure that spouses are included in uh, a vari variety of activities, uh, events, meetups. Uh, uh, we make sure to connect you to different services that make sense to you. Uh, we work really closely with uh, Entry Point program, the mentoring program uh, that is developed uh, by Talent Espo, uh, as well as co-development. So uh, all our services are developed uh, very closely uh, with the spouses and we make sure to include you uh, in how the services uh, are built. Uh, I'd like to focus uh, really quickly on uh, the career club. So the career club is our specific uh, career tr career track, let's say. Uh, uh, so we focus on a career related topic in the career club uh, and these uh, services are open uh, only to ESPO, uh, ESPO residents. Uh, the idea is that uh, you work together uh, with a group of like-minded people uh, and we meet eight times. You have uh, group discussions, individual discussions, and support, uh, as well as exclusive events and workshops that are uh, organized uh, organized for you participating in the group. Our goal is, of course, uh, to increase your knowledge uh, and your skills, but we uh, put a lot of efforts also in building up professional networks uh, within uh, this career club. Uh, we take the spouses into account, of course. Uh, uh, we, we have uh, two sessions within the career club that are targeted specifically uh, for spouses. So we discuss uh, spouse specific topics, uh, but we make sure that also in the career club spouses get to interact with uh, different kind of talents, uh, Finnish or foreigners, uh, for example. Uh, here you have an example of what we do uh, in the career club. Our career club is currently uh, ongoing, but you can apply to our next round in 2022 on our uh, webpage, espopistefi uh, slash career club.
uh, I try to be uh, really quick. I'll be very happy to answer any of uh, uh, your questions in the chat. You have my contacts here. Feel free to be in touch if you are a spouse living in Espoo, uh, if you have any uh, comments or questions about what's available for you. Uh, and uh, as you can see, we also work with uh, network colleagues uh, outside of the capital region. Feel free to be in touch uh, if you would like to know uh, to know more than what was in this uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Johan. And thank you, Olga, uh, for this wonderful presentation. And I'm sure everybody uh, will definitely benefit from the information you provided. We will also share the material with everyone. We also have the recording of this session. So you will get all the needed information going forward. And now to the interesting part, uh, the panel discussion uh, that we had promised. So um, I have some uh, distinguished guests with me here today. And I also have some uh, people like where this program began with spouses or trailing spouses who had come to Finland, but who established themselves very well in Finland. So the problem statement is clear. I guess one side we talk of the talent deficit. Finland says that every year we need 23,000 new workforce in Finland, uh, almost 8,000 jobs in the ICT industry. So yes, we are lacking talent here. We are trying to recruit or bring international talent. But then at the other side, uh, the challenge is that we have skilled people sitting here in the Finnish soil and are looking for jobs. So where is the disparity? Where is the gap? What is the showstopper or the road blocker in the matchmaking or finding the right people to the right thing. So this is our topic for the discussion today. And let me introduce my guests uh, today. So first on the list, I have Sophia Poles. Uh, hi, Sophia. Sophia is the CEO of Finder Seekers. At Finder Seekers, they help companies with their talent strategies. Uh, they're working with interesting companies looking for tech and digital professionals and develop their employer branding, recruitment, and overall talent acquisition strategies. Like I just said, how to bridge the gap. So that's what your company page says, that you help, to help clients to bridge the gap between talent and organizations and help them find each other or let the magic happen. So welcome to this uh, discussion, Sophia. Uh, the next in line is uh, Steven Terhorst. Uh, hi, Steven. Um, Steven is an experienced executive with a history of working extensively in B2C, B2B industries. Uh, Steven is skilled in general management, strategy, diversity and inclusion, uh, sales excellence, marketing, and an international development. And uh, how Steven is relevant is that Steven is working as Point of Potential, which is also focused on uh, recruiting international talent in Finland. What's special about Point of Potential is that they only recruit international talent living in Finland. So no Finns allowed, probably, <laughs> uh, with, with due respect. <laughs> uh, next, we have Melissa. Uh, welcome, Melissa. Uh, so. A lot of descriptions, sorry for that. <laughs> so Mel Melissa has planned, organized, and led several projects and initiatives related to talent attraction and retention in Finland. Again, very relevant for today, what we are discussing. In 2011, together with Technopolis, Melissa launched the Talent Match concept, which was introduced to live talent, live talent pitching and reverse pitching for the recruiters. Uh, currently, Melissa is working for talent, uh, is responsible for Talent Espoo, which is city of Espoo's cross-functional approach uh, of National Talent Boost program. And Melissa is pa passionate about building bridges between cultures and fostering dialogue between public and private sectors. So thank you, Melissa. Welcome. And then I have two interesting ladies here with me. And uh, first, I have Bhairavi Doshi with me. So uh, Bhairavi is a MSc in organic. Bhairavi had done MSc in organic chemistry from India, and she had eight years of work experience in India. But then she moved to Finland in 2012, and I think you had your own levels of struggles and uh, getting integrated in the society, understanding the language. And then 2015, you again started working for La Peranta University, uh, and your post -doc did your post doctorate as well. And now you're working. Uh, as a researcher at Neste. So interesting journey. Uh, welcome, Bhairavi. And next, we have Ruchi Sahita. So Ruchita, Ruchi is a quantitative risk analyst at Nordia Bank. 
she has eight years of experience in fields of analytics and business intelligence and uh, she helps clients drive the data analytics and data visualization uh, originally from uh, Maharashtra and she's living in Finland for 10 years you moved here again with your husband Ruchi yeah. you also have masters in business administration and you also had your period of struggle to find yourself in the society but you've established yourself and you are here today so we would be interested to hear ideas from you and journeys from you ladies uh, as at least three of you are directly indirectly uh, into the talent acquisition and talent retention industry. So maybe my first question, and I would keep it free flowing, so whoever wants, please uh, want to get started. And it's the obvious question, what are the challenges you see for recruitment of international talent? Like we said, we have so many talented people here. So there is one side uh, demand, there is also a local supply, but it's not happening. So where do you see what's the problem? Maybe Sophia, you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a, it's a very complex uh, challenge and we could talk about it for hours I and, know. and <laughs> it's not, uh, I, I won't be able to cover it in, in, uh, in two, two minutes, but um, something that I realized about the Finnish employment market is that it's, it is very much based on trust. So I think like we, we have such a small population in Finland and people people generally know each other. They they know someone who knows someone and, and that is that is what is building the employment market to be very, very, very much focused on trust. And I find it. Um, I find that the, the internationals living in Finland, uh, as well as uh, Finns who studied abroad, face the same struggle, which is that they don't know anyone from the employment Networks, market. Or you in, mean. exactly, yeah. they don't have the networks, which would then help them to get the job. We estimate that 70 to 80 percent of all the jobs are never marketed anywhere. Yes. So it's a big bunch of jobs that will never go on on Dunitori or Mall or, or LinkedIn or LinkedIn, LinkedIn or wherever. And those jobs are filled because someone knows someone, mm. or they're either headhunted for that position. So I feel like that is uh, that is one of the biggest biggest struggles for for a lot of people without those networks to to get the to get the job. But then there are also a lot of different aspects of that we could talk about, but maybe I'll let the floor for, for someone else. I can add to it. Yeah. yeah. So from my experience and, you know, uh, talking to my friends, I realized language is, of course, a common problem. But there is, again, um, whenever I talk to my friends or back to people in my community who are looking for employment opportunities, they are... Uh, directionless in sense uh, they don't know like what is uh, where what is a good job opportunity for them or what do they really want to do so my suggestion here would be like they should explore their interest and sometimes you know we believe that we are good in one thing but you know we should try new things as well our interest or passion might, might you know divert to the other fields and also i believe there is one more thing uh, like flexibility to accept the opportunities like we are very rigid with our demand you know we we don't want to uh, step back sometimes because i have a friend who is a career coach a career coach at uh, espo uh, city and she has told me that she has many time offered some junior position to some people who have some good experience at senior level but this is an opportunity you know they can get into they can prove their self and they can move forward from so there. you're trying to say let's be flexible, flexible. or a yes. little bit deviate yes. from where yes. you are so yeah these are like three main things i realized you know that, okay yeah sure sure do you want to add something? Or? Yeah, I would. I would like to try to to paint the picture. Uh, I usually like to share on the screen, but uh, but it's it's a picture of um, of a, a boat with two people standing on the boat uh, fishing. One has a mm. net and and the other one has a fishing rod, and um, I kind of like uh, try to try to sort of explain the city of Espoo's role mm -hmm. uh, what 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 is our role through this metaphor that we are kind of like the 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 boat that we can we can bring people we can point out that there these are good places to go fish mm -hmm. uh, we know mm -hmm. that you know the the perch like to you mm -hmm. know hang around this part of the waters and and kind of like the waters being the the yeah. labor market 
And I think one, one important element in, in this picture is are the, the people who, who are fishing, that, that we want to support people's own agency um, and, and sort of uh, be the one to help with picking the right tools and maybe fixing the tools a little bit. Mm. But I think, um, uh, I think then to, to answer the question of, uh, I mean, explaining what, what I see our role as, but then what, is the, what are the, the, the issues, I think, um, continuing on what, what Sophia was saying, I also think um, that um, these kind of like uh, the, the relevance of micro encounters mm -hmm. also that, that providing opportunities for people to interact, yeah. whether it's in a career event or whether it's at, at the school in a, in a parents uh, uh, evening, I think, I think all, all opportunities where there is a possibility to facilitate interaction, you know, between people mm. who have come to Finland, who already live in Finland, I think these, these so are... People should go and visit such mm. events or networks or uh, avenues where you get to interact with the locals. Yes, I, I think yes. And, I, and I think, point, you know, yeah. identifying where the opportunity, it might be at the, at the soccer, soccer, you know, You're right. game of, of, the, of the kids where actually the right contact can be made. So, Me, yeah. so kind of like leaving some room for for serendipitous uh, <laughs> yeah. encounters. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I think we have had this uh, discussion in IWF uh, as well. Like there also, when we talk about networking and meeting people in this COVID time, it has become a little difficult. Maybe it's improving now. But uh, how open it is like for events, Still, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I think it's still an attempt that you try to go and meet as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. You never know which is the right conversation you have with whom in the bus also, which might end yeah. up being in the right place. Yeah. yeah, and I truly believe like grabbing opportunities, even if it's a small opportunity, but it, it can lead to a, you, you can reach to some place from there, uh, yes. for example. You need a starting yes. point, yeah. Uh, I have actually started when uh, with a company where I was not paid at all, but I uh, I took it as an opportunity at that time, five six years ago. And uh, after that, you know, when I when I started working there, and following that, I have uh, uh, I have got this job opportunity from some media company and like gaining work experience, learning on job, and now I am working at Nordia. So, in a way, it's a big achievement for me yes. being in Finland. Yes. So, we should grab opportunities and try to be at uh, the right place and right time. Like, we yeah. should try for that. Also. Yeah, moving on for, forward. Thanks, Ruchi. Um, I think uh, I would look at you both for this answer, maybe. Uh, organizations these days are focused lots on diversity, equity, and inclusion. But when it comes to recruitment and recruitment of international talent, the numbers usually don't say that truth or it's a bit skewed data. So why is it so? And what can organizations do to recruit international talent? I know you started with trust local networks, yes, they play an important role. But now even the organizations have an imperative that yes, we have to have our diverse workforce. So it's a win-win on both sides. What, what do you suggest? How, how can organizations change their narrative and start taking right actions? Stephen, you want to? <laughs> I mean, Stephen, you said that you only do uh, recruitment of um, international talent in Finland. What is your selling point to your clients? How do you convince them? That's a very good question. Um, well, that's I think that's the whole uh, miracle that we try to realize every day that uh, you're right. I mean, on the one hand, we see Finnish companies that are crying out loud for, for talents they cannot find. Uh, and as point of the potential, we are in the market to build those bridges with what we estimate 40,000 highly educated professionals who live in Finland. And seriously, we don't understand why people are not finding the right people because there are loads of people with the right skill sets. Exactly. Uh, however, we are in Finland and Finland is in that sense uh, a bit of a unique market. It's one of the most homogeneous markets uh, in the world. Uh, I'm originally from Holland. Mm -hmm. I moved here eight years ago as a spouse and I can tell you also from personal experience that it has not been easy. And we have been analyzing, and that's also the reason why we started Point Potential, is that we want to overcome that 
on the one hand, we want to be informative. We want to inform foreigners what they can expect, because I think you need to be also uh, transparent and open and honest to international job seekers. Because sometimes we come across people that they are either naive or they don't understand how it works here. Uh, on the other hand, we feel that we have a role to educate. Mm. Uh, and uh, very briefly, there are four hurdles. We see four hurdles that foreign job seekers have in Finland, unfortunately. And I'm not sure that they want to change uh, in, in the short run, but they are clear hurdles. So mm -hmm. one of them is uh, the recruiting process itself. The moment they send in their CV with a, a different with last a foreign name, name. Yeah. and a different picture, you already a minus one. Mm. It's really hard to say, but that's reality. Uh, so that's where we come in and we try to always do the pre-screening and we make always a special report that highlights the skill sets and experiences that are relevant for the job so that they actually can stand out. So if you overcome that first hurdle, mm -hmm. uh, the second hurdle, of course, is the interview. Mm. Uh, you need to go in there and you spark. You will not speak Finnish. And um, there are companies, which we have seen, that get really nervous about that. Uh, they have to change their English. Mm. Uh, again, I'm not talking about the big ones, the Nokias and all that, and the Connors, but I'm talking about, let's say, mid-sized or small companies. Mm. So that's the second hurdle. The feedback we get from the candidate is that, hey, it's a great company, but the environment is not inclusive. I don't feel at home there. I have looked around, everyone speaks Finnish. I'm not sure whether I can flourish there. That's the second hurdle. Mm. The third hurdle is you might even get to the point that you signed a contract. Mm. Say, ah, I got uh, the, the, the contract. What we have experienced, unfortunately, again, is that you are probably getting a job offer that is under your potential. Mm. Huh? So that is, uh, mm. and you will not get the salary that you actually have studied for. Exactly. And that is an, a, a, a big hurdle. Uh, the, the Part of that is as well, if you would accept a job, and you are actually overqualified, strangely enough, you will experience that, let's say, the Finns will have a faster career path than you have. Think about it. If you think it from <laughs> an objective point of view, it doesn't make any sense, but we're still here because we believe in, in Finland and we believe in the future. Fourth hurdle is that if you have found your job, and look at the example here that maybe your spouse is not happy. So you found your dream job finally, <laughs> but then you have a spouse that needs to look around for eight, nine, ten years before the, he or she finds the, the dream job. Yes. Well, these are hurdles that we try to take away. It's going to be a long process, but I agree with what has been said earlier. You need to have trust, you need to be agile, uh, you need to maybe uh, reskill your, your, your skills that you have so that you are maybe attractive to a wider group of, of, of employers. But it, yeah, it is, it is uh, and it will re remain a tough True. process for foreign job seekers. Yeah. Do you want to add something? Oh, better you can yeah. go. At least, yeah, it's, it's a very good, good point what Stevens raised. And in, in correspondence to that, at least from my experience, I would say that communication was the first thing and maybe where to knock the door. Like, mm. okay, we are here in Finland, what to do if you want to find a job? So that gap has already, fee or you like see that they are feeling now very well here. And the another thing is I would say that being an immigrant, like, or whatever the spouse comes here, never lose the motivation. Because it's not like that the first try and you get a, your dream job, no. It's, it's something like you always have a very nice experience when you see that phases in your life that not at a first click, but just wait till you get a right opportunity. To just keep the motivation for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wanted to, I, I definitely agree with, with all, all points made here. And I, I wanted, to, wanted to add something, which is that um, I feel like we have, a great, uh, we have a great work culture in Finland. There are so many really good aspects. And I feel like one of the things is that once you're in, you're, you're in. Mm -hmm. And then it, it really means that you're in properly and, and people do value you. And there's very little this kind of like... Uh, politics inside the work life. Mm. Of course, there is some um, everywhere, but it, but it's a, it's a great place to be in. But it's very hard to get in, in. and yeah. that is the that is the challenge that we see. Um, I think something to add here uh, on on Stephen's point point as well. We talk a lot about processes and how recruitment should be made. Like, uh, you know, no picture, no names in it, and so on. But honestly, personally, I feel like what we should really do is to. Um, educate recruiters more, mm. value recruiters, uh, educate hiring managers a lot on their biases because the biases are there 
and there's a lot of um, we talked about it uh, in the other room as well that there's a lot of like kind of hidden racism mm. uh, that's surrounding the question about language and whether you should speak Finnish or not like let's face it most Finns speak really good English I don't think the language is that big of an issue but there's a lot of racism behind that and and I think like there's also this conversation that we should have with our organizations very openly about their biases and the hiring managers biases because even if we remove the name from the CV the bias is only going to move forward in the recruitment process and then it's going to happen in the second or first interview and 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 then what yeah exactly and then yeah. what and that is why I really think that we should make uh well, coming from a recruiter background, we should really focus on making recruiters also more aware, aware and make them make sure that they're challenging the hiring managers, make sure that they are really taking the conversation forward. Mm. But the mm. good thing is that diversity is a mega trend and it's coming and it's happening. And I don't think you can anymore as an organization or as a hiring resist manager, <laughs> you can't resist it. It's here to stay. <laughs> You had something to add, Melissa? Yeah, I was um, I was thinking about this uh, project that was run by the National Institute for uh, Health and Welfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they were just rewarded last week with this uh, recruitment action of the year uh, prize, uh, where they they had uh, sort of uh, uh, created a very concrete list of suggestions how uh, employers can recruit. Uh, more diversity, mm-hmm. and I, I try to remember them, but I think um, uh, one of them, uh, or the list was that they, the the employers should have a diversity clause in the job ad. They should very carefully think that how much finish do you actually need mm. in this yes. in this uh, uh, specific position. Uh, so kind of like be critical about the level and clearly state that what do you actually need to be able to do with with Finnish language. Uh, then there was an, an anonymous uh, kind of like a work sample, do some kind of a task to to showcase your 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 competences. Um, I'm sure there was something else as well, but these so were the. So you yeah. need to come with innovative recruitment yeah, processes yes, and yeah. not yeah. fall into the. From my personal experience, I can add to it. Like uh, this is very good point. Like that, um, recruiters should mention in their you know Keep job ad. Close. Sorry, job ad that uh, what what level of finish do employees need? But from my personal experience, like my first job. Uh, the job ad was in Finnish. The language requirement, there was Finnish language requirement. Mm-hmm. But somehow when I went to the interview, the recruiter was really impressed with me. So she did not, you know, uh, take a note of that I speak very le- less Finnish or no Finnish at all. She just mm-hmm. hired me. So sometime, you know, we have to challenge take it. that yeah. chance. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think yeah. when it's a technical job, I know, yeah. Ruchi, you started, you have yeah. to challenge the status quo. Do you really need a Finnish language skill yeah. here? Yeah. And I would, I used to get it, it the other way. So I, I, I was uh, like, I had moved to Finland for a job, like uh, from India. And after 10 years, I, I never changed job because I thought I'm in sales, and who will want a non-Finnish speaking salesperson? I was, I never dared to change. But then when I was headhunted at Accenture, six rounds of interviews, and not in a single interview they asked my Finnish language proficiency. So it was never needed. But it was either us thinking that. Do I know and can I go ahead or challenge the yeah. status quo? And like when I see experts sitting right next to me, you know, and when we now talk about this uh, attitude of recruiters towards the employees and, you know, some racism aspect also. So in that situation, you know, when we uh, when we go for job or when we face such situation, it's very difficult to keep up the motivation mm-hmm. for job hunting and also what would you like to suggest for the people who are watching Uh, here like for them what would be your advice now I don't know how long it will take for the transformation to happen but (laughs) during this present situation like as an expert you know what would be your advice for them how to take this yeah (laughs) how to take the situation Uh, I think that's a very good question and it heavily depends on the the person is uh, her or himself uh, there are people that are uh, so motivated to find a job like yourself and they will keep continuing and pushing yeah. and looking and networking till you find it. Uh, unfortunately, not, not everyone has that same drive and we realize that as well and we see this on a daily basis yeah. that people are 
seriously depressed, uh, looking mm -hmm. for a job for five, six, seven years, and, and have been maybe invited once a year to an interview. Uh, then the coaching comes in. We do a lot of coaching as well and help people to actually get out of their routine. Because like you said, you need to be sometimes be very honest to yourself and reflect mm -hmm. where you're coming from and yeah. what you're doing. And what we noticed is that a lot of frustrated candidates mm -hmm. They have gone in the routine of just, you know, slash copy uh, CVs, cover mm. letters, mm. and then sometimes I read it out loud for them, and they start smiling. Because they realize, like, this, this doesn't make any sense. I said, it doesn't well, fly. But that's the point, that sometimes you need someone that you can actually, you know, talk to mm. and reflect. Mm. What have you done? Where do you stand? And what is it that you really want? And we call it our program, then, uh, finding your dream job. So we have different processes for that to, to develop that together with the candidate. Uh, but that is exactly the point. And we do this with people who have not so strong self-confidence. And we do it with people who think they are God. You know, they think that we can get everything. Mm. Uh, and they are patient and they keep pushing for finding the right job. And sometimes we actually open up their eyes and they start looking in the other industry and then suddenly they get interviews because they, they have actually experience that is relevant for that particular industry, mm -hmm. but they never thought about that. So mm -hmm. these kind of things I think is important to sometimes, it doesn't need to be a recruiting uh, a person or a consultant, but maybe it can be a good friend or a family member or someone that is not maybe that close related to you who can be brutally honest to you and say, hey, have you thought, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Just to get you out of your, your daily thinking because sometimes you just become blind for, for the opportunities that are around you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, like you mentioned, and you mentioned that people start getting frustrated and giving up. But I think that's something you both did very well, that while you were waiting for the right job to come across, you started studying. Mm -hmm. So it's not always that it's going to come and your, knock at your doors. You find avenues, you start doing higher education, you study the language. And Melissa, I know you are a big advocate of why not finish. I know the narrative some people says only 5.5 million people in the world speak. But what's the downside if you learn a language while you're waiting for it? I'm not saying that, yes, I mean, I never learned Finnish. I never got the time or never had the need. But while you're waiting, why not go and learn the language, upskill yourself, do some training so that you don't feel depressed and then you will definitely land into something. I think you both have done the Finnish language courses. Yeah. They both have done the T employment where you, you are working, you are like PhD, highly qualified, but you are still working for free probably, but mm -hmm. to get in yeah. the circles. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to wanted to add on what uh, what Steven said about um, sometimes it's also that you need to kind of like act like as if you already have that job. Mm -hmm. So so what I always encourage people who feel a bit lost with uh, with job hunting is like use like max one hour and send like two good applications per day. But we're very focused on perfect your CV, polish it, make it perfect. It's not about the CV. It doesn't really matter. I've seen like horrible CVs and people still get jobs with those CVs. So it's not about the CV. Yeah. Like use use maybe one hour for that and then use like four to five hours per day just to meet with people, ask them for coffee. I think this is a great thing also about Finland is that if you ask people like, hey, like, do you want to go for coffee with me? They they're generally like very interested and they're kind of like, oh, that's weird because not, not a lot of people do that. So, so it's, it's a very good way to meet new people, to get new ideas, to get those networks, to get those connections. You can even ask people for help. Like, hey, can you have 15 minutes with me? I really want to integrate. Like, how can I find a job? And just have those conversations. Mm -hmm. I, I am also like an advocate, why not Finnish? Because uh, I'm still learning Finnish, I feel. I'm not a fluent speaker, but I try. And uh, I can say from my experience, like uh, for I, I have been working at OPE uh, in past 11 months. And uh, there, when it was for my interview time, I, speak, I spoke very broken Finnish, like it was not fluent at all. But you know, uh, they were happy. Like so, even if you know a little bit Finnish, it helps you somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it and helps to break the ice yes, and do the small yeah. talk, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and and also sometimes it's the solution is right in front of you, but you become blind of it. And I give you an example. We had a really good person who just happened to speak German as a native language, and we had one of our clients, and they said, you know, yeah, we want this kind of sales engineer. Oh yeah, by the way, it would be nice. 
If, if this person speaks German, I would say, oh, okay, but that is a USP. We can find a person. Well, it wasn't that easy, but we found a person who actually, you know, speaks German natively. Never thought about that. And now suddenly he finds this great opportunity. He's happy. Company is happy. So sometimes you also need to see where are you from? What is your background? Can you utilize linguistic skills? Can you utilize your, your special skills that you have maybe learned at school or that you have done in your first job in your career and that maybe is five years ago but you still know how to do it you know and I'm not even talking about of course the whole designing and engineering and, and, and things like that which is international language anyway mm. so no matter what kind of language you speak you know the coding language is it's, international so yes. you utilize that because if we, whether you're a coder in India or in Finland it's the same same yeah, yeah. Maybe I have my next question to the city here because there was this 90 day Fin program and like Finland is advertising, attracting international talent a lot. But I heard, read few reports, a backlash with the local talent here, I mean international local talent that, hey, we are sitting here, we don't have jobs and you're still advertising outside and ran the nine, I think it was by Talent Boost Program or this 90 Day Fin Program mm, and stuff. I think that was City of Helsinki. City of Helsinki, program, yeah. yeah. So, so what, what do you think, what can cities do? Like we spoke, what can people do? We spoke, what can organizations do? What can city do to change the narrative or bridge the gap, in your opinion? Um, well, at least in, in Espo, well, if you, if you think of this whole talent attraction cycle that you need, need to have a reputation, you need to be able to attract and, and integrate and, and, and uh, again, kind of like continue on, mm. the, on the cycle. And it is a cycle which feeds into, you know, each, uh, each of the other parts, but uh, I would like to think that we start, you, know, you need to start somewhere, and I would, I would uh, uh, say that, that it's important to start with, with you know, making sure that we have the system up and running and working here, and we're able to, to provide good services uh, for, for those talents who are already in Finland. Um, and then, of course, um, we need to support those, those businesses who just cannot, that the talent just doesn't exist in, in Finland, then to support them in, in, uh, in their recruitment uh, efforts and endeavors outside of Finland by providing information about you know, what, what kind of a city we are, where, mm -hmm. where, where you can come and live, what are the services available to you. So, um, yeah, does that answer your question? Somewhat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think it is. It is kind of like, um, yeah. Everything feeds into into the the process, the and process. I think I would I would put first emphasis on on making sure that things are running smoothly and well here. Because if you open the door and then you know it's just uh, <laughs> opening the door to a, to a dark cellar, it doesn't. It's, it, it doesn't, doesn't really, work. Yeah. 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 Pay off in the end. Do you want to add something, Stephen? Yeah. No, first of all, a compliment to the city of Espo because I think they are a front runner when mm -hmm. it comes to this area of integration of foreigners. So I definitely, I think Thanks that's a good step people forward. people like Melissa. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. On the other hand, I, what I see in Finland, unfortunately, as well, is that um, when it comes to DEI, there's a lot of talking, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. we all know that. Yeah. But concrete actions are very limited. And if there yeah. are initiatives, they are so fragmented. Hmm. Uh, I, there's so many DEI workshops, and I just also joined an, uh, a mastermind uh, around yeah. DEI. And what if we could somehow bundle our forces, you know? And I think we could make more impact because mm. Finland is a small market mm. five and a half million people, 400,000 foreigners. Somehow we are not able, that's less than six million people, <laughs> to work this out and actually get a freaking good. DEI program sponsored mm. by the cities, by the companies, you know, uh, mm. that opens up doors mm. so that we really make a step forward. And I have no idea how to do it because mm. I'm not the one who is in charge of all those ideas. The fact that there are so many initiatives, that's a very positive sign that, that tells me there's a need for it. But let's be honest, the steps that we see around us every day are still very small, small steps. steps. Mm. Yes, mm. yes, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree that that there is there is a lot of a uh, lot of different kinds of programs going on. Uh, but I'm taking a historical perspective, like you said in the introduction, that I've been working in this in this space 
for over 10 years and and we have definitely come a long way that, I agree. that that w- I mean there's a lot of things still to be done but uh, but I I I do agree that that what what you Stephen said is is necessary but I think first we need to build the momentum that the, oh now we realize that there's a lot of lot of you know smaller streams you know starting yeah, yeah. to uh, to trickle and and it will eventually uh, eventually turn into something something kind of like more comprehensive and yeah. that's what happened now we have the talent boost program first we had a lot of public uh, sector organizations doing one thing here and the other thing there yeah, you brought it and now together. now there is there is a coordination going on yeah and so, I, yeah. I agree I mean things are changing maybe is it the right pace or not I'm not sure but like I had come to Finland in 2007-8 I had no idea about any of these things I had come in a job so I never cared about it also maybe but I think from there till now it has come a long way and I think you both might agree you also have been here for 10 years I don't know uh, 10 uh, something of that sort so is there some practical tips you want to give to our fellow Indian spouses there like three things if you want to say what should they do and focus on uh, at least the 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 first thing, or maybe at least I can begin a little bit. My experience, it would be more easier to say them that when I landed here, it was not a capital city. It was like La Perant. I don't know how many of them know. And at that time, maybe Indians also were so many few Indians, at least 10 or 15. So you were landed in a world where you don't have your own Hopefully culture. Hopefully you didn't come in November. No, 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 no. But but still, I was in in, in May. I was here wearing okay. everything still you because have it was a, time. it was a cold cold uh, summer yeah. for me, and I have everything on my this uh, body. And then I, I got the comments that hey, are you landed at, at somewhere where you have six months days and six months nights? <laughs> then I said no, it was not the situation. But over there, there was a very nice program uh, done by this city of La Peranta. So they have uh, a, a small funding project going on for the international people. So you meet them, they give a little bit of counseling that okay, what you have studied, what you would like to go, and then how you should follow it further. So that how was a first tip that if, if you have like each and every city has their own websites, and they also have some programs for immigration. So you should and check out yes. the website. So, so that, that's the first thing that we know that we are all are living now in a virtual world and we have all the information available digitally. So that's and, and, the first step. And that's step. exactly what we try to do with our program mm. in the first half. Yeah. Listing everything so people know where to reach out. Yeah. To. So so that, that was a first step. And then again, the second was is like communication. So we also have one more more a good program. Maybe I don't know if it's in ISPO also like having this uh, language coffee in the library. So you share your languages, you share your culture, you try to learn something, you try to share your culture with someone. So that house you get more integrated to the society. Very good point. So that's that's a second thing that integration is always lacking back back in different cultures. That hey, no, we don't want to get integrated. And it's, it's always good that sharing and caring. So you share something with other, and I'm sure that now fin- Finnish people also gets like, when we have this Diwali event, we also see that Finnish are also equivalent in terms of Indians. So you always have a very nice cultural sharing with them. And sometimes we had these games and all that, and hey, we don't know this answer, and they know the answer. So we were so happy that that's how the sharing and caring. Yeah. So I think that's the three points I would okay. like to share. Ruchi, you want to say something? But being conscious of the time, you have to summarize quickly. Yeah, I, I would like to say, you know, keep trying. Because uh, I maybe you don't get result in short term but if you keep trying consistency and you will surely reach and whoever is trying for a job you will surely reach there someday if you're trying and please take like uh, well-being very seriously be happy and uh, focus on yourself also along with uh, you know looking for employment opportunities because if you're not happy that would you know definitely reflect in your personality when you go for an interview or meet people Good point because everybody wants to see happy faces you know because everybody have a lot of stress in their lives so try to be happy yeah, and who want to recruit a yeah. sad or a grumpy person yeah. i mean you have an indian name yeah. indian qualifications indian experience and now you're not happy and uh, i would also all my friends all the indian friends and who are watching now or who will watch i would 
I would uh, like to say let's support each other, right? And like uh, it was said that references do work somewhere. So try for each other as a community, you know, come together and let's support each other. It, this is what yes. I want to say. Good yeah. one. Yeah. Your closing remarks. Yeah, so. if I can quickly add to, yes, to this, be, be happy and be energetic. I would also uh, add uh, be curious, mm. ask questions, because that's a very good way to catch people's attention and actually actually show your passion, show your uh, expertise by making good questions, whether you're uh, calling to ask about a job ad or mm. whether you're meeting someone for the first time. Asking questions, Ask questions. Uh, is, is, a, is a good way to, good way to get make an remembered. Impression. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Sophia, please. Yeah, um, I just I wanted to give one uh, very practical uh, advice from a recruiter perspective and then maybe another one that is more like heartwarming, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But the practical one is that uh, when you come from a different background, when you come from different um, educational institutions and different companies, it is very difficult for a Finnish recruiter to know like what they are. So that's something to add on your on your CV and on your on your profile anywhere where you have it. And when you talk about those experiences, to explain in a couple of words what is the organization and mm. what is the educational background mm. that you have, because when they don't match with something that I know, it's a it, it takes me a lot of time to Google them or check them out. So that's that's a very practical tip and then the second one uh, which I think is very very important is that we need to keep each other and organizations accountable for diversity as well mm -hmm. so we need to ask them like when we when we select partners we need to ask them like how diverse are you can you show us your diversity numbers how are they actually happening in your mm -hmm. organizations mm -hmm. and we also need to we also need to make sure that employers are are doing this when they're recruiting it is illegal to require fluent finish if it's not necessary for the job and it's that's very important to, to remember that yes and that's why we need to also question them and ask them honestly and we need to demand that we have more representation in the in the cities in government in in the in the leadership of organizations that okay. is very important okay very, very good point i would say you want to end on a positive note yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just yes, wanted to yes, say yes. that we are just mainly talking about diversity here tonight and unfortunately we also have the inclusion part uh, so we're not getting there today but yeah. uh, the only advice I can give you that if you are going to, to, to apply for a job check out the company network with people who work at that company uh, because uh, unfortunately if the team that you're going to join is not inclusive meaning there are other foreigners working there your chances of success are limited. Mm. That is just a fact. So do your homework and do make sure homework. that there are at least 20% of the team is uh, non-finished uh, in order to make it work. Make it work. So, uh, and I, uh, one more last note. Uh, I love your example from La Peranta. We had an, uh, a recruitment for a company uh, uh, in the Lachti area, and they were looking for engineers. And we reached out to La Peranta, and we found people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And instead of one, they hired four wow. from Colombia, Cameroon, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And the interesting part was they were all students, they were all friends. Mm -hmm. So the moment one of them saw this opening, they said, hey, you know, I saw this great opening at Point of Potential, let's apply. Instead of feeling competitors, they supported each other. Mm -hmm. And that's how all four of them got wow. a job while they were looking for one at first. Yes. So just to give you a very positive example that there's always hope, network, and go for it, I would say. Thank you, everyone. Interesting discussions and very relevant topic. We touched on the right points, and I hope this was meaningful for our audience, too. I will just summarize what you guys just said. Be flexible, be consistent. Be ready to upskill or reskill. Uh, keep trying, networking. Try to build the trust and challenge the status quo. So if they say language is needed, language is important. I'm not undermining it here. But if it's needed, look at the job description. If it's a technical job, really ask, do you need the language? And I think you even mentioned it might be illegal if they really ask for it. So it's not just for your comfort. What is the real requirement? It's important to understand. But I think we are still coming a long way. Like I started this conversation before this that 
after 14 years of living in Finland, this was the first year I got a happy Diwali from my client. Mm -hmm. Every year I was wishing Merry Christmas. So things are changing, times are changing. So thank you and thank you to the audience. First of all, I would like to thank you all of you for being here today. I guess our audience must have got a lot from you. And I am no different in this story. And one thing for the summarize and you know take home, I, from my personal experience, is always be hopeful. I never left hope and it's not very new that I have gone through this and did everything that I could do and landed up a job. So be hopeful guys and uh, it was pleasure having you all here and special thanks to Vaishali for planning and executing this. And thanks and to the embassy. Thank you uh, everyone on behalf of embassy and I hope you guys uh, would have, would know what to do next and you're feeling motivated, you're feeling informed. So with that, we'll end it here. Have a great evening. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. Thank you.